Hello. Today I'd like to, to talk to you about a systems thinking approach to coaching track and field and why that is the best way and necessary way to coach the sport. Um, first a little background. So I am an 11th year track and field coach um, at a local high school in southern Maine. Um, I've been doing outdoor track and indoor track um, for the school. Um, I've coached hundreds of athletes and I I feel like I'm just now learning the best ways and best practices um, to get the most out of them and get the, the most out of the team and to make this the most successful program it can be um, in ways that go beyond you know, track meets and running better times and throwing further distances um, or jumping further distances. And so what I want to talk about today was ways that you can coach this sport um, and use a systems thinking approach to make it a more rewarding and provide better outcomes for everybody. So one of the ways that I wanted to, to mention is that um, it's based on the, the Sharmer uh, U theory. Um, and so the part of the U that I think is really important um, for coaching, and really this could be used for any sport, um, and I use track and field because it's the one that I coach and the one that I spend the most time with and, and um, have the most uh, interest in. Um, the part of it is U that I find the most interesting is the co-initiating part. Um, you know, and uncovering shared intentions. It's really, really important. Um, and I think one of the most overlooked things um, to really make sure that you are, um, you're in this program for, for the kids, for the athletes. Um, and you need to make sure that your intentions and what you're doing um, and the things you're working for are the things that those kids actually want. Um, you know, it's something that I've, I've been taking for granted for years. Um, my assumption was kids want to win, they want to win state championships, they want to win races, they want to win um, you know, their heats, they, whatever it is, they, they want to win, and they want to do the best they can. And in a lot of ways that's true, um, but those aren't the only outcomes that kids have been looking for. Um, and so actually doing this and, and kind of having this co-initiating session and, uh, and talking about shared, um, shared intentions and what we're all looking for um, has been enlightening. And one of the things that I found is that they're looking for a sense of community, they're looking for a team, they're looking for friendship, um, they're looking for a place to belong, um, they're looking for something you know, something to do to stay in shape, they're looking for, for all sorts of things that go beyond just winning a race or winning a, uh, a meet um, or even winning a state championship. You know, that's obviously a, a fun outcome and something that every kid wants to do, um, but it's not something that every kid you know, is capable of doing, especially uh, when they're younger. Um, so there's so many other things, and I, I had never really considered that um, because from my point of view, I'm coaching to win a title or show coaching to win a state championship. So um, being able to look at that, that uh, U theory uh, from Sharmer and understand that, that there's a lot of co-initiating and, and common themes and common um, intentions that can be uncovered and can be seen, if you just start talking to kids and you just you kind of have that dialogue with them, which is also very important. Um, the second part of Sharma that I thought was pretty applicable to, to coaching track and field was presencing and co-creating. Um, and again, for years, I, I kind of took this as, I have to do this, I'm the head coach, I'm the leader, I need to make sure that I'm creating this whole program to make it uh, as something that kids are gonna wanna do, they're gonna wanna work out, they're gonna wanna succeed in. And, and what I've learned is it, it's not necessary, and really not possible to create this by yourself. Um, this co-creation, the presence thing that's necessary, it has to be done with the entire team. Um, you know, and, and it's something that it takes time and it takes energy, um, but it's made their season so much more fulfilling. Um, when you have, when the students, the athletes are involved um, in actually getting to create the program and create what it looks like. Um, so now I start off every season with asking the students and the, the athletes on the team, what do you want, what do you want to get from this season? I've never heard anyone mention a state title. I've never heard anyone mention I want to win every race or I want to win every, um, you know, every time I jump, I want to jump the furthest. You know, but they talk a lot about it. I want to, you know, I want to form tighter bonds with my friends. I want to, I want to have fun. I want to get in better shape. You know, I want these, these less tangible outcomes, these intangible outcomes. Um, I want to meet more people. I want to, I want to uh, you know, enjoy myself. You know, I want to get outside every day. Um, things that, are, that would, were not things that I thought about. So I was, despite the fact that when I was creating this, I was looking at all the best practices and looking at all the, you know, the things that kids should want and what they, they might want. What I was really looking up and 
trying to do was to find the needle in a haystack. Instead of just tapping that dialogue and asking students, I needed to know what they were looking for. Um, and so those two things in Charm were really were enlightening. Um, as I moved to, to uh, the fifth discipline, and I started reading through that book, um, there were things that were a little more applicable to forming a team and what that looks like. Um, and when you talk about team building and, and um, creating a program, you're looking at a shared vision. And again, this is a, something I think a lot of coaches struggle with. I know starting out, my first five or six years, I thought the vision had to be mine. I thought it had to be my vision and everybody would fall in line with that. And we were gonna do what, exactly what we had to do to, uh, to win meets and to be better at this. Um, but that can't, can't be how it works. It's not how it works. That's not the best way to do things. Your shared vision has to be shared from everybody in the program. If they don't see what you're doing, if they don't have some input or a voice in what you're doing, what the program looks like, it's just not gonna work. Um, you know, I think uh, in the fifth discipline, they use a, a picture of a box. And all, if they have a shared vision, all the arrows are pointing the same direction. If you don't, they're all pointing in different directions. Kind of like rowing a boat. You're not all on the same, on the same uh, page, rowing at the same time, in the same direction. You're not moving anywhere. You're not changing anything. Um, you know, if those, those oars are all pointing in different directions, or if you're all moving in different directions, or you're following a vision that you don't quite understand, or you don't even know what the vision is, um, it's pretty impossible to, uh, to have any kind of success. So that shared vision is very important. Regardless of whether you're going to run repeat 200s or you're going to do a feed the cat style training or you're going to do um, you know, you're going to go to exhaustion every day or you're going to work technical skill, um, you know whatever your your practice theory is, you know in terms of training, it kind of pales in comparison to making sure that everybody's on the same same page with a shared vision and understanding what that vision is, how you're going to accomplish it, and why. Um, I also think there is, um, Sen Senjay had ma mentioned um, and written about personal mastery. Um, and I've seen a lot of it in my research too about coaching, where personal mastery of the coach over the sport is important, um, but maybe not as important as, as you may believe in terms of knowing every single event or knowing you know, the exact technique for things. Um, what students and athletes want is for you to show that you care and their personal mastery is more personal mastery in terms of desire to be there and interest and um, wanting to help. Um, of course, they care if you know how to do things and how to teach them things, um, you know, technique and how to throw and how to jump and, and a correct running form. Um, and that builds a lot of um, credibility. But a lot of that, that personal mastery, again, is understanding people and understanding what they want and what they need even if it's disagreeing with, with what they think they might want at the time. Um, and the last part in the fifth discipline that I, I really um, really thought was interesting was, was team learning. And they, they mentioned Bill Russell um, in this section about being on the same page and just feeling that, that special when a team is playing at such a high level or competing at such a high level that they feel like they're, they're one or two steps ahead all the time. And, uh, great jazz musicians who know instinctively what that next note has to be. Um, that is kind of like the nirvana for a team and reaching that, that existential plane of everybody's in stride, no pun intended for track, um, and clicking with each other and just, it just works. It just works and you see what, you see it happening. Um, that's the, that's kind of the, the pinnacle um, is when you hit to that point and that's when you've got things that are aligned. You know, people are feeling like they belong, they can understand what's coming next. They understand the system. You know, to, uh, to, <laughs> to bring it back to the original point, when you're a systems based, you use a systems based approach in your systems thinking, you have a situation where people understand the system, they understand their role in the system, and they know how that works, how it all weaves together. Um, and sometimes in, in athletics, and especially in track and field, they can get very bogged down in the technique working very bogged down in the specific of what that person is doing or what needs to be done by that person. And we miss on the whole team aspect, and how teams fit together. Because even though there is a lot of, um, there's a lot of individual uh, aspects of track and field, you know, there, there's a relay aspect of the team and the, the teams are scored as a whole team, not as an individual. Um, 
but there needs to be that little extra that if you're running something and you need to push a little harder, you know, if it was, especially if it's a relay, you know your teammates are there, you know they, they're with you, you, know, you understand the vision, you understand what we're doing. Um, and that's a very acute example, but kind of a, a chronic um, use of the systems thinking approach. Um, it's that shared vision again of we're doing this specific training because this is the vision. This is what we're seeing, this is what we're doing. Um, and so as, as a track and field coach, I have found this to be an extremely helpful way and an extremely beneficial way to coach my team. You know, and again, it's not a, I'm not gonna sit here and tell you to do certain, certain workouts, certain exercises, hey, warm up this way, hey, you know, do this for practice, you know, or don't do that, that's, that's, you know, that's not, not gonna help. This is an overarching um, approach to building a team, not building an individual athlete or building a, um, or building even a relay team, but building an entire program getting the most out of that program um, and just and making it making it work better um, you know whatever you're doing this can be added to it um, and the systems-based approach brings people together it makes sure that you all have a shared vision um, and it gives you gives you a way to really presence and, and co-create something special with kids instead of creating something and hoping they like it um, and hoping they want to be part of it uh, thank you for listening I appreciate your time